Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rabbi Sima Oster from the Aspen Jewish Congregation, and I am delighted to stand here to support Alexa as she becomes a bat mitzvah. Whether this is your first or your 50th bat mitzvah, Alexa is going to guide you through this entire service, so you're in good hands. Um, while Alexa is here in front, it is up to all of us to bring the joy and the celebration through our participation. This is not a performance in any way. So we need you and your participation to make this the joyous occasion that we know we all want it to be. Um, something that I have always considered really special about Judaism is that every person is considered equal when it comes to spirituality. And anyone can lead us in prayer. And in addition to preparing to read Torah and to teach us some Torah today, Alexa has also been preparing to lead us in a prayer service. And that's exactly what she is going to be doing tonight. She'll be leading us through the Kabbalat Shabbat, the welcoming of Shabbat prayer service, and then the Shabbat evening service, the Ma'ariv. Um, Alexa is going to call a few people up to join her at different points throughout the service. When you do get called out, please walk carefully. And I'm going to ask that you step around the candle lighting table and come over this way. Um, I think it will be the easiest way for you to come. And you'll take the microphone from me so that everybody can hear you. Before we start Shabbat and before I pass um, this leadership over to Alexa for the rest of the evening, um, we also, in addition to celebrating Shabbat and celebrating this wonderful young woman becoming a bat mitzvah, we also find ourselves just weeks away from the Jewish New Year, from Rosh Hashanah. And as we prepare for Rosh Hashanah during this time of reflection, it is customary to hear the sound of the shofar blown every single day. The sound of the shofar is something that we don't blow on Shabbat, though. So before we welcome in Shabbat, I'm going to ask Levi Anderson um, to please come up and sound the shofar for all of us as we end our Friday before we begin Shabbat. As a young man at Hebrew school, we found that this is something that he does well. So thank you for honoring Alexa and all of us by sounding the shofar. Levi is going to sound just one shofar blast. And with it, just think for a moment of how you are preparing for the new year. Ready? <laughs> All right, and now I turn the rest of our service over to Alexa. Welcome to my home on this very special night. As some of you know, I was supposed to go to Israel in March to get bat mitzvah with my parents, my mima, and my mimi and pops. Because of the war, that sadly could not happen. Instead of Israel for me to get bat mitzvah, we are here at my home. Welcome. We, be, we, we begin Shabbat with lighting candles. Light as you hear, light as you will hear, will be a theme throughout this evening. In a moment, my Mimi, my mom, and I are going to light these candles. I want to explain why we have three candles tonight instead of two. My sister Juliana was born on March 3rd, 3-3. In our family, we have always known the number three as a very sacred number. So tonight we will be lighting our three candles for three generations. If you'd like to follow along, the blessing is on page 196. Even though 
many people don't wear a, pro, a prayer shawl on Friday night because I'm going to read from the Torah tonight. And because it is my bat mitzvah, I will wear one. So I would now like to ask my Mimi and Pops to present me with my talit. If, you would, if you'd like to follow along, I will recite the blessing on page 48. Ruth Atad and I, Eloheinu Melech Halam, Asher Kedeshani Bar Mitzvah Tov, Vitzivanu Lehaiti Tov Bat Tzitzi. Amen. It's beautiful. Mazel Tov. Mazel. And Alexa's smile is even more beautiful than the Talit. The Shehechianu is an ancient Jewish blessing of thankfulness to celebrate special occasions and milestones. It celebrates our gratitude for reaching this very moment, a moment that maybe just one year ago you could have never pictured. We'll come together to recite Shechianu, recited by Jews for nearly 2,000 years. If you know it, please join in. to ask my Mima and my Uncle Chris to share a blessing and a reading. Excuse me. Build me a granddaughter who will be strong enough to know when she is weak and brave enough to face herself when she is afraid one who will be proud and unbending in honest defeat, but humble and gentle in victory. Give her enough of a sense of humor that she can be serious when necessary, but never takes herself too seriously. Okay. Build me a granddaughter whose heart will be clear, whose goals will be high, who is satisfied with her true self, one who will learn to laugh, yet never forget how to weep. One who will reach into the future, yet never forget the past. O source, oh, excuse me. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who enter the sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings to their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love.
we will now sing a few songs and prayers that welcome Shabbat. These are joyous songs that express how happy we are to be celebrating together. If you know them, join in on page 8. On page 16, we will sing verses 1, 2, 5, and then rise and, and face the entrance to our backyard for verse 9 as we welcome in Shabbat on page 16. <laughs>
sort of a warm up. Now we're going to sing the first prayer, the bar who. The bar who leads into the main section of our prayer service. We will begin with a song in English that is included on your program, followed by the Hebrew words on page 24. Please rise if you are able and join in. these words. You may be seated. I would now like to ask my cousin Matthew to share the reading at the top of page 25. There is one who sings the song of his own life, finding everything within himself. There is one who leaves the circle of herself and sings the song of her people. There is one whose voice rings with the song of humanity, hoping for the highest perfection. And there is one who rises even higher, uniting with the creatures, with all, the, with all worlds, filling the universe with song. Navareich. For the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem friends who helped me learn the Rea Hafsa. I'd like to ask my cousins Lindsay and Maggie to join me in chanting Rea Hafsa. Please join in, 
Please join in with us on page 32. They are Our next prayer, Miha Moha, was sung by the ancient Israelis after crossing the Red Sea, Red sea from slavery to freedom. During this prayer, let us bring into our hearts all those in the world who are not free. Let us sing with hope that soon they too will be singing this song about freedom. Please join in on page 36. to page 40 and rise for the Visham Ru. Shemayim. 
please remain standing and turn to page 130 for the Amidah. We will sing the words on this page and then move into silence and pray the words in our hearts. We will join back together on page 152 for Osa Shalom, our prayer for peace. Adonai, Siphatai Tifta, Ufiya Gita Gilatea. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Oh, say shalom, Imraun. now going to transition from our prayer service to our Torah service. And by the way, whoever made the seating plan and put kids in the front, this is amazing. <laughs> there are so many Barnabas mitzvahs where kids sit in the back. And I just want to tell you the energy up here is fabulous. Thank you guys for your participation. Do you feel it? It's amazing. Okay. Um, so we're transitioning to our Torah service. Um, the moment when Alexa will bless the Torah, read from the Torah, and become a bat mitzvah. For those of you who are diligently following along with Torah reading every single week at synagogue, um, you'll notice when you listen to the Torah reading that Alexa is going to read that she's reading a Torah reading that should have been read in March. And when Alexa introduced and welcomed you to her home tonight, she shared that originally her bat mitzvah was supposed to be in Israel as a family trip that would have been in March. So Alexa is reading that piece of Torah that she was preparing for that trip. So chronologically, if you were following along in the Torah, right now, Jews who are reading the Torah in other synagogues are reading a portion in the fifth book of Torah, the book of Deuteronomy, um, when the Jews are about to enter the land of Israel. And Alexa is going to read from a piece of Torah right smack dab in the middle of the Torah. She'll read it in Hebrew, and then she'll tell you a little bit about what she's reading. Um, before we do that, 
I want to invite up Alexa's parents, Stacy and Alan, who are going to physically do what they've been doing since the moment they became parents. Since the moment Alexa was born, they've been teaching her their values um, and passing on tradition. And I'm going to ask them to pick up the Torah and pass it to Alexa. If you'd like to follow along with the Torah reading, we're on pages 166 and 168. Ki Torah. Ki mitzion te Torah. Udivar Adonai mi Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Leamo Israel Bidu Shato Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adonai, Kadoshimo, Gadlu Adonai, Di, Uniromimashimo Yachdav. And now Alexa and her parents are going to very carefully. Um, parade this Torah around our space, showing that the Torah is not only for people who have practiced reading the Torah, but is accessible to everybody. You can tap Alexa on the back very gently. You can kiss the Torah as it comes around, wishing her congratulations. Le. <laughs> The table that we're reading Torah from um, is not a rectangle, so we're going to not read Torah from the center of the table. So I'm going to ask that whoever gets called up to bless the Torah is going to come to Alexa's left side and bless Torah from that side. So we're going to keep the Torah all the way on the right side of the table. Um, Alexa's going to read three pieces of Torah. And, and for each piece of Torah, we're going to invite a different generation from her family to come up and bless the Torah. 
So for the first aliyah, for the first blessing, I'm going to ask Alexa's grandparents, her Mimi and her pops, to come and join us. And I'm going to call you to the Torah using your Hebrew names. Yeah, I'm due. Sorry about Avraham, Vidaniel, Halevi, Ben Baruch, Aliyari Shona. We'll wait a moment. We need Alan for this part. But how oppressive was that? <laughs> Alexa learned to read Hebrew. She learned to decode the Hebrew letters, Hebrew vowels. And then when you look inside the Torah, which you'll get to see in a few moments, the Torah will be lifted and we'll show you the inside of the Torah. There are no vowels or punctuation inside the Torah. So what Alexa's reading from is only consonants, which is pretty amazing. For this second aliyah, we are calling up Alexa's parents. Um, Ya'am Du, Sara Leia, Bat Daniel, Halevi, Visari, Ve Yosef Wolf, Ben Avraham, Elia, Ve Marilyn, Aliyah Shnia. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Halam Asher Bakar Banu Mikol Hamim Vinan Tanlanu Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Fashat at Begadav, Villa Vash, Begadim, Aherim, Vehotzi at Tadeshen, El Mihut, La Mahane, El Makam, Tahor, Vehaish, Ahamis Bea, Tukadbo, Lo Tipe, Uvir, Ale, Hakohain, Etzim, Baboker, Baboker. Baraha Aleha Haola the Hiktir Aleha Hakohain Helve Hashamim Esh Tamid Tukado Hamis Bea Lo Tipe Baruch Atad or Nai Eloheinu Melech Halam 
Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Bihaye Olam Nata Bitokenu Baruchata Adonai Notain Hatorah. So stick around. Yeah, stick around. Yeah, stick around. <laughs> because now, for our third and final Aliyah, we call Alexa up to the Torah using her Hebrew name for the very first time. This is the moment that Alexa becomes a bat mitzvah, when she will bless the Torah and read from the Torah. Ta-amod, 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 Aliyah, ta-bat mitzvah. Zlata Ariel, but Yosef Wolf is Saraleya. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bar Harbanu Mikol Hamim the town Tamanu et Torato Baruata Adonai Notain Hatora Amen. Zot Torah Hamiha Hakrev Ota Benea Haram Lifne Adonai El Pene Hamis Beach the Harim Mifne the Kimsa Nesolet Hamin Ha Umikshona Vet Kohavona Asher Ahamin Ha Behavim Vihiktir Ahamis Beya Rea Nihoa Akarata La Dona before we put the Torah away in the presence of our Sefer Torah, we're going to call into our hearts all those in need of healing. Um, I believe that we have an Aunt Fran who is watching over Zoom and isn't here with us. So we especially want to be thinking about Aunt Fran. Um, the Mishabeirach prayer is on page 175. If you are able to, I'll invite you to stand. It's on page 153. Um, 175 at the top of the page. Um, in our congregation, our tradition is to sing the beginning of our prayer, the first stanza, and then I'm going to invite you to list names and to share names of those whom you might be praying for, and then we'll sing the second half of the prayer. So praying for Jerry Jager. Is there anybody else praying for someone? You can call out their name. It's okay if two of us call out names at the same time. God can hear all of our prayers at the same time. Souls in need of healing, we 
and ask you to remain standing. There's a few more prayers that we'll say in the presence of our Savior Torah. I'm going to invite up Alexa's Aunt Allie and Uncle David to share the Avinu uh, Shabbat Shemayim, the prayer for the state of Israel. We're going to read the prayer in English. It's on page 181 in your prayer books. O oh, Heavenly One, protector and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shielded beneath the wings of your love, spread it over the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land and fulfillment of your joy for all who dwell there. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to remain standing, but now is the time that you're going to get a glimpse into the inside of the Savior Torah, and you'll see, um, you'll see what I was talking about that there are only consonants in the Torah. I'm going to ask Alexa's uncle Danny and Aunt Samantha, and if and if Elia is with you, you can also come up. So what Uncle Danny is going to do is he's actually going to um, pick up the Torah, um, open it just a little bit. Uncle Danny, have you done this before? Great. So he's going to pick up the Torah. He's going to open it a little bit and turn it around so that you can glimpse inside the Torah. Um, and then he'll close it again, and um, Aunt Samantha will help dress the Torah. And then Elia, you get the special job, if you'd like to, of putting the Talit, the prayer shawl, back on top of the Torah when we're all done. Um, if you'd like to follow along, we'll be chanting the prayer of Torah on page 175 and then singing Eitz Chaim on page 178. All right, ready, ready, ready. And by the way, just one second before you get started, Uncle Danny, one second, one second. Just so you know, you're lucky because the Torah would have been very weighted to one side if Alexa was reading today's Torah portion, but we are in the middle, so it's a very balanced for you, so you're welcome. Okay. All right. Ready when you are. asher samosha. Lifnei b'nei Yisrael al pi Adonai biyad Moshe. You may be seated. Before I begin, I would like to start by thanking you for being here. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Whether you came from Bogota, Colombia, or the other side of the roundabout, it means so much to me and my family. Thank you to my family from Florida. I couldn't imagine this night without you guys here. Um, and I'm convinced my friends are mostly here to see Owen and Olivia, but um, thank you to my family from Chicago. I'm so happy that I have so many opportunities to be with you guys throughout the year, and I'm even more grateful that you all are here tonight. I feel so lucky that my Nima, Mimi, and Pops are also here with me tonight to watch me become a Bat Mitzvah. 
None of my amazing parents. I know that my mom was a tad bit worried for this part in the speech that, thinking I forgot to thank her. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't. Come on, mommy. I'm so lucky to have the best mommy ever, who always puts others before herself. Thank you for being my bestest friend ever. I love you the mostest in the whole wide world. Now it's my very, very special dad. Dada, thank you for always knowing how to make me smile. I love talking about football together, and I hope our football pool does well this year. <laughs> thank you for always doing fun and crazy activities with you guys, with me. I love you guys with my whole heart, and you guys are my biggest supporters. Don't worry, run and roll, you guys are a close second. <laughs> Without you guys this weekend, this weekend would have been, been nothing, literally. You guys work so hard to make everything perfect, even though we have our moments about the screen time mostly, and other things that my parents will add to the list of how 13-year-old 13 13 year girls are the best. I'm so <laughs> lucky for everything you guys have done for me. Next, I want to thank all, all of my friends that are here tonight. All of my Aspen, Camp, and Deerfield friends, I'm so excited to have you guys here tonight. I want to thank my amazing party planner, Stella. Thank you for everything. Now I want to talk about how lucky I am to not have one, but two amazing rabbis here tonight. Rabbi Simla, you have been so kind and patient with me, even though I'm not the easiest kid. Thank you for teaching me and preparing me for the past 18 months. Rabbi Pam, you have always been there for me for my literally my whole life. I am so grateful that you, Sadie, and Naomi are here for my special night. I want to thank everyone for coming here tonight. It means so much to me. At the beginning of the summer, while I was learning to become a bat mitzvah, my family traveled through Europe. In each city we went into, religious buildings, both synagogues and churches. In the, chur in the church when I was in Prague, I saw Hebrew words on the, on the wall. That really surprised me to see Hebrew in a church. In the Portuguese synagogue in Amsterdam, I saw how the Jews incorporated ideas from other religions and used them in their synagogue. For example, the seats in the synagogue were not facing towards the Torah, but instead facing towards the wall. I learned that Catholics in Amsterdam at the time sat this way too. So the Portuguese Jews did this in their synagogue too. Some of the most interesting takeaways for me from seeing these beautiful syn synagogues and churches is how they were similar, what defined them each as a synagogue and how they were each unique. Some differences were how in the older synagogues, women and men were separated. Women had to sit upstairs, but in the older churches, I did not see any signs of separation between genders. Some similarities I saw between the two were how the churches also had some sort of central altar that everyone was facing. I also saw that every single synagogue, without fail, had an eternal light over the ark where the Torah was kept. Interestingly, the churches, who obviously did not have a Torah, also had some sort of light over the altar. I'm sure you are all wondering what this has to do with the Torah por portion that I read to you this evening. Well, that's a great question, so let me tell you. In my Torah portion, I read about the ritual items that were used in the very first synagogue ever called the Mishkan. In there, it was the Mizbeah, a table. The table was used for sacrifices. The that table is what has become the table we use today to read Torah. It is also still used today as the altar that I saw in both synagogues and churches around the world. My Torah portion is also the source for the eternal light, the Ner Tamid, that is seen in nearly every synagogue today. The, the Ner Tamid, this eternal light, is what I want to focus on this evening. Here's what it says in my portion. A perpetual fire shall be kept burning on the altar, not to go out. From this verse in the Torah, I had a few questions about the Ner Tamid, the eternal light. I spent some time this summer reading and researching about the eternal light, and I learned some interesting information. Some rabbis say eternal light means regularly, and that people in the Torah lit the flame every single day. That is the flame that we still have burning above our arcs today, in each synagogue, as a remembrance of the first eternal flame. Other rabbis have much more to say about this mystical light. They said that the eternal light can be a metaphor and a mindset. The eternal light has become a very important symbol in the Torah and for the Jewish people. One, it's a symbol of God. Two, it's a symbol of the first light that God created on the first day of creation. And three, it's a spiritual glow that can have any time, that we can have any time, like when we light the Shabbat candles and a calmness enters each home or when we summit a mountain and see the amazing views of the world around us. That's the spiritual glow of the eternal light. The eternal light is a, is a light that cannot be seen. It's a feeling, it's a presence, it's a connection, it's a love. 
Eternal light, it's it's not just something we read about in a Torah and see in our synagogues. Eternal light is something that is in my home and brings my family together. In my family, we use light to remember our loved ones who aren't here with us. We light candles, put up pictures, tell stories. This is how we bring them into each day of our lives. In most cultures, not just Jewish community, people light a candle to remember someone they have lost. When I think of eternal light from my Torah portion, I right away connect it to my sister, Juliana. Every day of the dead, my sister's birthday, and other days as well, we light a candle to show our love and remembrance of her. On this special night, we also have a candle to show her presence. I would want nothing more than to have my sister's light shine in each and every one of your hearts while you're here celebrating this milestone in my life. Juliana is my best friend and biggest supporter. When I have something I'm worried or nervous about, I think, what would Juliana have done? Or I think, do it for her. Sometimes when I do something out of my comfort zone, I talk to her in my head and imagine her face being so happy for me. My sister is like a flame that never goes out. Even though she doesn't get this opportunity to be here today, the light she carries and spreads is eternal and will never go out. Her flame is a part of my heart that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Thank you. Um. Today is a special day for our family, and most importantly, you, Alexa. But as you know, it's an emotional and complicated few days for us. It's been a struggle for us to find the appropriate mix of focusing on you, but not leaving out your beautiful sister, Juliana. Because for our family, this is it. One beautiful and hopefully amazing bat mitzvah, and we're done. We don't mind sharing with you that your mommy and I are probably only still living, not in the sense of death, but in the sense of trying to enjoy life because of you. You deserve that from us and more for what you've been through in your short 13 years. Everyone who meets you, whether it's your teachers, your headmaster, your coaches, or even complete strangers, all frequently tell us how special you are. You are more special than you can imagine. You see, you're an inspiration to both mommy and me. It's the combination of your determination, your drive, your wit, intelligence, pure silliness, your appreciation, your manners, and your passion for new experiences. You show us how to overcome fear and enjoy life how to make the most of every day. So, our sweet Alexa, you should know for a mu as much as you may learn from us, we are learning from you. Our desire for you as you continue to go through life is to continue being you. You're a natural leader. People gravitate towards you. You're not afraid to stand up for right and wrong, You're not afraid to challenge yourself, and you're not afraid to question things. You're not afraid to be silly, and you're not afraid to have fun, and you're not afraid to try new things. You may not realize it now, but someday we assure you, you will. Those are special attributes most of us wish we had. So, somehow, somehow it went away. It was here. I brought it down. And, and, all right. Well, I love you the most. <laughs> you had a good speech. And I had a really good speech. It was here. I swear it was here. It was, you found it. Oh! <laughs> Sorry about that. Alexa Lil, you are our light, our love, our laughter, our everything. Born on the day you were due, at 4 p.m. on the dot, I thought you'd always be very punctual. Then I realized you're a greenfield after all. We hope while studying for this day, you'll realize how special it is to be Jewish. Judaism is what you make of it, how you discover the beauty in it. We've done many mitzvah projects together over the past several years, and next week the kids at Comer's are sure to be thrilled with your packages. But our hope is we continue to collectively help those around us. We are so lucky to have not one, but two amazing rabbis here today. Rabbi Pam has been with us every step of the way. Rabbi Sima has so patiently guided and taught us. 
and taught you. We are so very appreciative of them both. Please take a look at this very surreal moment right now and look around our backyard, all these people here today that love you. They came to celebrate you. May you always feel this special and loved. Please bottle it up and take it with you. It can get you through a down moment or help you persevere through a lonely time when maybe your heart is longing for your little sister. And please remember that nobody is perfect. And if there ever were a perfect person, none of us would ever want to meet them. <laughs> We've loved watching you prepare for this day. I'm definitely going to miss it. Just last week, I thought to myself, not every day someone practices their Torah portion while driving up beautiful Independence Pass to 12,000 feet above sea level. We, drive to, we drove all the way to Colorado Springs where you dominated, scored a goal in your soccer game, and then turned around and started chanting their Torah portion again. It's a perfect example of how you roll. You hit it up, you light it up, you dominate. You're a positive teammate and a leader. You're all in. And I get to just watch and be your Uber driver. And of course, be your biggest cheerleader. Like the song says, you're only dancing on this earth for a short time, honey. You should continue to make it fun, make it silly, make it worthwhile. And no matter what you do, continue to do you and only you. And may you always remember. And if you don't remember any of what we're saying tonight, we ask that you just remember this. Live and enjoy life each and every day. Not every day will be easy, but in both the good days and difficult days, just ask yourself one question. Are you living a life that would make your sister proud? That's all we ask. We both love you more than you can ever imagine. Enjoy the rest of tonight and every moment of this weekend. You absolutely deserve it. We love you the most, as our sweet girl. Alexa, it has been such a joy to be here tonight. I think for all of us to be a part of this moment and to be in this truly magical place. You know, I too am so sad about what's going on in Israel and I'm sad that we didn't get to take that trip together. But I think that there is something so special about the fact that we are here instead, because this is also a sacred and extraordinary place. And I think it's fitting that we're here in your home because in this week's Torah portion, there's a very famous line that says, Baruch ata b'vo'echa u'baruch ata b'tzeitecha, which means blessed shall you be when you go out and blessed shall you be when you come home. And that implies that all blessings start from the home, that all blessings stem from our home. And we're told that we should make our homes like a sanctuary, which you've actually done tonight, which is very impressive. <laughs> but the reason that your home is a sacred and holy place is because of the people who are in it. And you, Alexa, are so blessed to be living in a home that is filled with so much love. You are the most beautiful reflection of both of your parents. And you have been given so many morals and values from them, ones that I take with me all the time. I always think about how we shouldn't waste and how we should appreciate the beauty of nature and how even when we're going through a hard time, we should still help other people. And because of that, you've been given this beautiful foundation that has allowed you to go out into the world and share your blessings wherever you go. You came into my life and the life of our family when you were just a toddler, I think a polar bear to be exact. <laughs> and I noticed right away immediately that you had such a dynamic way about you. You were so strong and confident, and some might say even a little bit loud. <laughs> you also, even at a young age, had a way of bringing out the best in everyone around you, a way of making everybody feel happy and carefree, even in difficult times. 
You were talked a little bit about light tonight, but you too have a beautiful light from within you, Alexa, that you share with everyone around you. And so while your journey has brought you to this new home and to so many exciting places, I know that you are going to continue to go out into the world and go out from this home and share that light wherever you go. Because the light that is, is inside of you, Alexa, is the light of goodness. It is the light of love and family. It is the light of Torah and wisdom. And it is truly the light of God's presence. And so at this time, what we're going to do is take this beautiful talit, this prayer shawl, and we're going to have you stand in the middle and have your parents stand beside you. And we're each of you take one end of the talit. You're going to come in this way. We're going to wrap you all in this talit. <laughs> As you are wrapped in this talit, we hope you feel wrapped in all of our love. And we hope you feel wrapped in our tradition. And mostly, we hope you feel wrapped in God's presence. Yevarachacha Adonai v'yishmarecha. May God bless you and keep you safe and protect you always. Ya'er Adonai panav elacha v'yichunecha. May God's light shine upon you and be good to you like you are so good to everyone you meet. Yisa Adonai panav elacha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God's presence continue to shine upon you and lead you to a life as an individual and a life with your family that is filled with only the holiest of God's blessings, with love and laughter, with good health and happiness, with joy and peace. And we all say together, amen. amen. Sometimes it's hard to think about peace when there is so much darkness still in the world around us. It's hard to think of completeness when the world is still quite broken. But I think that it's days just like this that give us hope. Days that remind us that we need to keep looking for the blessings. And if we just open our eyes, we can see them. Our tradition says there's a blessing for everything. A blessing when you come together with a community. A blessing when you see friends you haven't seen in a while. A blessing when you see something in nature like a mountain or like a rainbow or even a single butterfly. The blessing we say when we say a butterfly is Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Osei Ma'asei Vereshit, which means blessed are you Adonai, who creates, who creates something as small as a butterfly, a butterfly who has such a short lifespan, but in that time brings such beauty into the world. And so we praise God for the color and the wonder and the awe that a butterfly brings into the world. For many of us, when we think about butterflies, when we think about wonder and joy, we think about Juliana. You spoke so beautifully about her, Alexa. And as you did, I too thought about how she loved her big sister. She was really the perfect companion, the perfect counterpart for you, Alexa. And Juliana also had so many amazing gifts of her own. She was strong and feisty. She was hilarious. She was so courageous. And she was just good. And so I think that even though her five years on this earth were not as long as we would have hoped, in that time, she brought so much joy and wonder to the world around us. And even though she's gone, she continues to live on not only with us, but through us. And I know I am feeling her presence tonight. And I hope that you are too. And so to ensure that Juju's magnificent spirit is a part of this ceremony, there's a beautiful idea that we came up with. Everyone, Stella, with the help of Sadie and Naomi, are going to pass out these little glass butterflies. Everybody is going to get a butterfly, and there is going to be some marker, markers that come around tonight 
maybe during the service, maybe after. And we're gonna ask everybody to take one of the butterflies and you can write a word on it. You can write a blessing. Maybe you're thinking something about Juju. Maybe you didn't know Juju, but there's something you heard about her. Or maybe you just wanna give Alexa a blessing or something when Alexa looks back on this day, something that she can remember. So everybody will take their butterfly. And when you're done with them, don't take it home with you. Remember to please give it back to Stella or to me or to anybody, because after we get them back, they're going to be put into a piece of art, which is going to hang in Alexa's room, which will allow her to always remember, of course, this moment, but also remember all of the blessings that Juju brought into this world as well. And so together we pray that just as Juliana's life was a blessing to us, that her memory will continue to bless us as well. But we also want to remember the other individuals who are so important in Alexa's life. Of course, we're thinking about her grandfather of blessed memory, Alan E. Greenfield, her aunt, Allison Greenfield, as well as Susie Spack, Arlene Garten, Arthur Garten, Jerry and Bernie Dorman, Enid and Robert Spack, and Sadie and Bernard Greenfield. We turn together to page 193 in our prayer books, where together we find the words of Kaddish, words actually that do not speak about death, but praise God again for all the beauty of creation and for these loved ones who continue to live on with us. Please rise if you are able to. Yikadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah, v'yalma divra khirte v'yamlik malchute, v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chayeta kol v'yit Yisrael, v'agawa uv'izman kari v'imru, amen. Yehei shemei rabah mevrach le'olam olmei almaya, Yitbarak v'yishtabak v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase, v'yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal shemedu kudasha b'richu, le'ela min kol v'yirchata v'shirata, tush v'chata v'nechemata, t'amiran v'yalma v'yimru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shamaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru, amen. Ose shalom v'yimromav, Huya ase shalom, aleinu v'akol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all of Israel, and to all the world. Amen. You may be seated. And from the sanctity of memory to the sanctity of this day, the sanctity of Shabbat, the sanctity of time. We'll now turn to bless the, the wine and the challah as we move closer to our Shabbat dinner. So Alexa, if you will turn to page, if you'd like to follow along, the blessings. Okay, so Alexa is gonna bless the wine. Pour yourself some wine in this beautiful new Kiddush cup that she just got. From Rabbi Pam. From Rabbi Pam. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Halam Borei Peri Hadatha. Amen. Okay. Here, look at this. Wow. This is the most beautiful gluten-free challah I think I've ever seen. And Ali, wow. That's gorgeous. <laughs> and this is for everybody else. <laughs> Beautiful as well. Okay. Will you bless the hall? Tara Ata Adonai Elohenu Mele Halam Hamoti Lehenin Haaretz. Amen. Everyone will get some in a minute. We're almost ready to eat, but I need to bless this beautiful young woman because alexa you've accomplished so much you can grab a big chunk of challah and then come close <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
You led us in prayer. You read Torah. You shared a beautiful learning from your Torah, offering each of us a new way to consider light in our own lives. Alexa, one thing that stood out from, for me from the moment I met you is how caring and thoughtful you are. When you spoke about your mother a few minutes ago, when you spoke about your mother a few minutes ago, you said that she always puts other people before herself. When I was reflecting on your wonderful qualities and thinking about what I wanted to say to you, the first thing that came to mind for me is how you always put others before yourself. So I am just stunned by how beautifully you spoke about your mother. And I see it in you every time I see you. I see that in you. So my blessing for you is that you continue to take the best traits of your mother and the best traits of your father and you make them your own. Take the values that you've inherited from your parents and your grandparents forward into the world in your own unique and beautiful way. Use your thoughtfulness and kindness to continue to make this world a little bit brighter because just as Rabbi Pam shared, you are a beautiful light. Now, I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to look at the people that are gathered here as your mother asked you to do a few minutes ago because these are your people, <laughs> right? These are the people that when you come across a challenge in life, which you will because we all do, they're gonna be here to support you. They are the people that are always going to remind you of sweetness in your life. So before we have dinner, we have one way that we're going to show you that sweetness right now. But I do need help from all of your cousins. So every, if all of Alexa's cousins, from the youngest little ones to the oldest ones, if all of Alexa's cousins could just come up for a second, I need your help. Lindsay, Maggie, Matthew. <laughs> Aliyah, Atlas, Owen, Olivia, I'm talking to you. If you can just kind of pass candy around the room, take like a handful. No, you need to stay up here. Okay, pass candy around. Like share the handfuls. Like make sure you like pass it to all the different corners of the room. Get it everywhere. Okay, so pass that candy around. And everyone, you'll get a chance to eat in a minute. But for now, if you've never been to a bar bar mitzvah before, what we're about to do is we are going to literally shower Alexa with sweetness. Get that candy everywhere. Get the little kids back out. Kids, it's candy time. All right, so this is what's gonna happen. As soon as everyone has, if you don't have candy, you can just raise your hand and cousins will know to come and find you. We need candy while our hands are raised. All right, so in a minute, we're gonna count to three and you are going to Shower Alexa with candy. Just throw it at her. Throw all the love and the sweetness with that candy as we shout out Mazel Tov. And then we will joyously sing Mazel Tov and enjoy a Shabbat dinner that the Greenfields have prepared for all of us to enjoy this evening. So at the count of three, one, two, three, Mazel Tov! Simmento, mazel tov, mazel tov, simmento. 